one more thing before we start. Uh, we're, 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 we're officially started. This is the current show. So um, yesterday, I just had to say this. I said the ordinary plays the drums with chopsticks on, a, on the underside of the bucket. You've seen it done before. Now, yesterday, he turned the bucket over and put the chopsticks in hand and then raised his hand. He said, Mom, will you play this game with me? And I'm like, that's what we were doing this year. I don't know. So it's actually all about you. It's not about me and my work. It's about you and your creative process, which I'm very interested in. And uh, we all are interested in it. So what we will do is we will work for 45 minutes. Oh yeah, by the way, it's also a play. This is why this is really interesting. It's also a play. We do the action first, which is 45 minutes of working. And Patty will help us keep time. And then we will do the dialogue part. And we will talk. Did you move out here? You moved. You're, you're, you're not going back. Ah, one more. There's someone keeping the score. One more for the East Coast. <laughs> um, we have to balance it out somehow. But um, how's the polar vortex treatment? You like it? You you not take it personally. Yeah. Take it personally. Take it personally. <laughs> um, but um, welcome. welcome. And uh, so we'll do, we'll do dialogue, the dialogue part of the show. and. Um, yeah, so if those of you online, which I know there are some people online, I meet people on the street who go, I want it online, but they never tweet us. Um, but if you're online and you want to tweet us a question about your creative process, tweet it too. You can tweet it at watchmework, SLP, with the hashtag new play. Watch me work, SLP, with the hashtag new play. Whatever that means. Um, and tweet us your question about your creative process, and we will, we will give it an answer. Okay. So uh, let's begin. We're going to set our phone. I'm going to be at home. I might be working on my iPad mini. Because it's pink.
an alarm on the phone with your light. So a nice alarm. because this is her third play that she's using this device. And it's, it's tricky, you know. Sometimes we, we do things and we say, eh, this, that's my thing, you know. And so sometimes we do things and we, for some reason, our, our teacher is called to it. Did someone else say, why are you doing that? Or did you on your own? Well, I've kind of taken that from uh, it, it wasn't about this work at all. I've kind of heard that certain storytelling devices are, are crutches. When I was trying to figure out screenplays, which I have, you did it. I, 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 I got it. I got really You did it. I get it. But when I was trying to figure out screenplays, the way I want, I felt myself wanting to tell the first screenplay I wrote when I was having all that trouble. Right. I kept getting notes that my stylized way of writing may be a crutch for me actually engaging the storytelling. I, mean, I don't know, it just felt like that was the right way to tell the story, so I wanted to tell it that way. So I'm getting just slightly self conscious. It's not to the point where it's just nagging me, but I just I was aware of it. It's a, it's a, tough, it's a tough call, but um, my. My instinct says, if you call your attention to something, then it might be worth attending to. It. If someone else had given you the note, you know, then uh, you know, not sure. It's coming from an outside source. But if you keep doing something, and one day you're like, you know what? I kind of have a problem. I, maybe I need to look at this. If you're saying maybe I need to look at this, and maybe I need to look at it, you know. Um, uh, there are, I mean, other than The Last Menagerie and a, a few other plays, those plays that start with, like, hi, everybody, I'm going to tell you what it is. To me, I'm like, you know, um, because it does allow for um, 
But a lot of times, if the play is brilliant, and wonderful, and fantastic, you know, then it doesn't it doesn't matter. You know, really. I mean, Glass Menagerie, he can talk and talk all he wants, and we're okay because when he stops talking with us and they start interacting with each other, it's brilliant. It's delicious. You know, uh, Richard the Third. Now was a one of our discontent. Did he say that? Right. Now is one of our discontent. Why? <laughs> I deal with these people, here comes someone in a coffin. You know what I mean? I think that's how it goes. And, right? Yeah. Great, right? Great shit. Can't get better than that. Okay. <laughs> but, um, but a lot of us who use that divide, you know, it's a, it is, it, and especially if you're bringing your own attention to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like the second piece is done, and I think I'm just going to stop the third and, and like, I really like the second piece, it's pretty good. Right. Okay. But the third, I'm kind of like, meh. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, that's good. And if you, and that's a good note to think. If you're calling your attention to something, maybe it's something that needs your attention. You know. Um, and that's good. That's really being onto yourself and knowing your own stuff and listening in, which is essential for. A life of the arts. You know, I think it's essential. I think it's essential. Some people have whole careers and they don't listen to anything at all ever. But uh, we would hope to encourage that listening in and what Stacey's doing. You know, just it's a gentle nudge. And you take the note and you see where it's going to take you. You know, that doesn't mean you have to beat yourself up about it and feel like shit. Blah, blah, blah. Just because you're. You know. I stopped before I got there. Good. Good. So just like pat saying. yourself on the back. Pat yourself on the back. You know? Yay. Um, I called my attention to something, and now I'm going to see. Do you see there, is there a way to tell your story, the story of your play, without doing that direct address thing? Um, yeah. It's just, I don't know whether being stylized in the way I do, because I'm happy to tell. I was just a kid who watched movies of PBS. Right. And I'm just happy to tell television movies. Right. So the way I tell stories tend to be kind of stylized in a way, but not, it's not, I don't think it's like a trick, like it, I try to relate it, I try to use it with intention, right? instead of just saying, oh, well, here, this American can do this, right? Like I, I try to be aware of whether I'm just using it, instead of using it in a way that's true to the character I'm creating. So, yeah, I, there's another way I can tell the story, but the other way I'm telling it is still kind of, I don't know. I'm going to just go with the other way. I'm going to go with the other right. way. So let me so try. try. Right, see what happens, see how it feels. You can always go back to Kansas or Oz, which is, you know, you can always go back and do it the other way. Yeah. You're not locked this stuff. You're still going to get the play written. You can always change it. Yeah. That's a good, good question. Anybody else? Yes, hi. Remind me of your name. I am. Hi, I am. I see you all over town. Yeah. Yeah, hi. Hi. So I'm working on a play that I wrote eight years ago. Okay. And it was um, based on the life of my father. Okay. And the character based on him died and then he died. So that's why I have a hard time with the show here. And so I'm back to it because I'm ready. As I am going through, I thought that it was a story that's actually the character based on my mother's story. And so now it's completely turned around. Um, and I'm wondering should I be looking at a different way? The, the, up until the very last part. So you have. You, you wrote a play eight years ago, I wrote a play eight years ago, and it was, the main character was based on her father, who, the main character died in the play, and then her father passed away. And she's coming back to work on the play some more, realizing that it's actually the quote-unquote mother in the place. That's her play, it's the yeah. mother's character's yeah. play. Yeah. And so you're like, should you be taking a different point of view? What do you think? Um, and so, I'm wondering if I should 
So because it's a different, she thought it was character A's story or play, and now she realizes it's character B's play. I'm just using A and B to keep it easy. Okay. And she wonders now that she realizes it's character B's play, should she focus on the wants and needs and desires of character B? Right. And the answer is Shakespeare. Answer, well, the answer is um, yes and always. The answer is I say Shakespeare because, you know, every single character, I feel like every single character's wants and needs are articulated in a good play. In a good play, let's just say, not just Shakespeare. Okay? When I write a play, I, I think of every single character's wants and needs. And I think Top Dog Underdog, whose play is it? I mean, I don't even understand that question. And should I only focus on his needs and not his? What is he doing? Is he just the backboard? You know, you can either play tennis with a person, or you can play against the backboard. You don't, we don't want our characters, not to say this is what you're doing, but a lot of people do this. They write the character, and then they write the backboard. And the person just, the backboard is just there to return the ball. They don't have any other wants, needs, desires, or anything. They just return the ball. And I think there's a better way of writing. So, what's great about this is that you discover that character B also has wants and needs and desires. And now you need to focus on those. And while at the end of the day it might be character B's play or character A's play or character R's play, each character always should have their wants and needs articulated. Always. Um, and I feel like when one doesn't do that, we get those plays which sound like soapbox plays. And people say, oh, that's the voice of the playwright. You know what I mean? I hope, in, in my plays, I hope, it's all the voice of the playwright. Shakespeare, I think he was everywhere and nowhere at the same time. He was in all those characters. The guy, let's kill all the lawyers, that was him. Well, that was him. You know, to be or not to be, that was him. And the reason not the need, that was he was everywhere. He was everywhere. And that's what's cool. That's what's cool about good writing is the writer is in all places. So it's great. So now, yes, focus on the needs of the mother character. Fantastic. But don't then cross out and you know dismiss the needs of the father character. His needs should be continu you know, are continually articulated. Right? And she gets to do both. It's fun, that's great. So the play is gonna be so much better. And maybe they'll conflict, the needs will conflict, and all that kind of stuff, and that's conflict, and that's your play right there. You know? Yeah, I think it's like, it took some time, and now I can see it being like cooler. And so I'm like, oh, wait, I see you've got everything that you've seen before, and it's weird. But in a good way. Yeah, it's great. It's really, really great. And that's another instance of. You giving yourself a note. It's really great. You're reading your draft, you're listening in, you're giving yourself a note. And that's a really good note. Sounds really good. Yeah, so good luck with it. Keep coming back so we can, you know, check and see how you do it. Because I'm curious and interested how it's going to turn out. Do you have a game plan to work on it? Yeah, I went through, um, I went through as it is a play and not
Uh, so Morgan Cool, who just transplanted himself kind of recently from the West Coast, from the dark side. Um, so you're you're into language and you're good at writing things with language, language plays, language poetry things. And you're interested in developing the plot muscle, right? Yeah, I mean, and that's the, yeah, number one, the first thing you say is when someone says, well, they're good with language, you don't have to want to develop the plot muscle. If you're really good with plot, you don't have to develop the poetry muscle, for lack of a better word for that, phrase for that. Um, but if you want to, then um, it's like bicep, tricep, I don't know which is which, you know? Um, but it's, it's one and then the other, and both of them are really useful in moving the arm, right? Um, probably the one you're good at is the bicep, and the one you're not so good at is the tricep. Anyway, some people are great at plot, and their language is kind of flat, and they want it to be more beautiful. Um, so it's great that you have one skill, and you're looking to develop it. Um, I would say, do you, do you, Read a lot of plotty plays. Do you like to read? I like to read something. Okay. 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 What about plays? You can read some plays. You can read some Shakespeare. I know he's coming up a lot. I know. Fuck him, right? But some Shakespeare, right? He's plotty. He's a plotty guy who's really good with language too. I know. And it's free. I mean, you can either wait for the summer and line up in the park or you can go to the library and like take out a book. Amazing. You just have to give them your, you know, driver's license or content permission. And they'll give you books for free. It's amazing. And um, yeah, they haven't cut that back yet. So you could go to the library for free and get some Shakespeare. It's great. You know, King Lear, you know, all the hit. You can read his hits. If you haven't already, if you have already, you can read them again. And just, you can take a notebook and write down the plots. First this happens, then this happens, then this happens, then this happens. He does that and that happens. She does that and this happens. Do cover the hits. Read ten of them. Free. Won't won't cost you anything except some time. Okay, then you'll start oh okay. Then maybe read some of the famous contemporary contemporary writers if you want. And just focus on the plot. And if you do that a couple of months you'll go, okay, I know, you know. 
and there's some plots. You just have to get them. Do uh, you play a musical instrument? Okay, what do you play? You play what? You play the piano. Okay, so you know. You gotta get it under your fingers, right? It's just like, because I play guitar, I just gotta get it like under my fingers, under my fingers. So I learn this song, and I learn that song, and I learn this song, and I learn that song. And I just I have a list. I just had Jesse Alec print me out a list of like all these songs. Okay, great. I'm gonna work on all these songs. You get them under my fingers. So I'm learning musical structure. You know? So you play the piano, so you know. You're learning musical structure. Same thing with plot. Same thing. It's, just, it's all the same. Okay? It's easy. It's free. If you want to go to plays, that's fine. It's much easier in a way. If you're short on money or whatever, whatever. whatever you just yeah. that's, a good, that's a really good question. How to do things for cheap. Yes, JB says one minute, baby, and then we're going to turn off the television. Anybody else? No, no one tweets us anymore. I think we just send out a, a request list. People used to tweet us all the time, and now they just watch and think, what is she doing? Talking to me. But uh, if anybody ever has any questions about your creative process, you can tweet us, and then we'll talk to you and about you on the World Wide Web, which is fun. Anybody else? Are we, are we done? Are we finished? I forget your name. Have you, have you been here before? It's been a long time. You've been, yes. You look familiar. What's your name? Just remind me. Aaron. Aaron. A-A-R-O-N? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hi. 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 Good to see you. It's been many months. But many months. But you're back and you're I'm writing. Back. It's a new year, so resolutions and all that. Now. Right on, brother. There you go. <laughs> there you go, really. It's, yeah, it's a good, make those resolutions and, you know, keep the plan relatively simple and kind of fun, you know? And I really think the best way to, to hit goals is to put the time in. Just put the time in. If you don't feel inspired, that's okay. If you feel angry at your writing or your work, that's okay. I sit down with the guitar and just put the time in. You know, I sit down with the writing and just put the time in. So putting the time in is huge. And sooner or later, you know, it's going to start to come together. But it, 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 the chances of it coming together if you're not putting the time in are already more small. So good for you for just showing up. You just show up. Just keep showing up. That's what we do. Okay, now we'll disappear. <laughs> and we'll show up next week. But yeah, up, coming, coming up is, uh, is I go to rehearsal, so I won't be here, but not. But next week I will be here at 5. Right here. Okay, thank you for coming. Thank you. Yes, and it's so nice and sweet. Is it a, is it an art? It's a, it's like a it's called a brooch class. Yeah, it's beautiful. I was like, what? Yeah, I thought it was so beautiful. Thank it's you. gorgeous. Yeah. Well, my my children. No, my children. It's so beautiful. I've never seen them. I guess. Six. They have a short.